I have my coffee. I have my fancy mic. I'm Dwayne Monroe, and it's time for five minutes of FinOps. Chapter one of the book introduces us to FinOps. Where did it come from? Well, it evolved uh, over time. Uh, many different people, many different companies came into, or rather contributed to the creation of FinOps um, as they encountered the problem of how to manage their cloud spend, how to get insight into what they're doing with the cloud and whether or not it's performing for them. It's a cultural change. That's the primary idea. There's a couple of benefits. Financial accountability to the variable spend, the movement of decision-making about finances to the edge, and business IT and finance having to work together, which is quite new. Those of us who've been in this business for a while know that the, that's not something that has happened typically in siloed environments. We're introduced to Finn. And Finn has been working in IT for a while, and he's been doing things the way that all of us who've been around for a bit have been doing it, doing reports on a quarterly basis and so forth, doing capacity planning for servers racked in data centers. These things don't really work well in cloud. Fortunately for Finn, however, he has a colleague. Her name is Sarah, and Sarah introduces him to some key ideas for cloud, such as having a spend allocation strategy and tagging guidelines, and then right sizing, and also the importance of unit economics as a, a way of determining whether or not the cloud spend is, is in line with business objectives. We'll get back to unit economics a little bit later in the video. Silos are what we've been doing for, oh, what, 20 years or so, but FinOps requires us to all come together as a team to understand whether or not our technology stack is doing what we need it to do. The end of silos, I think, is a way of thinking about it. So there's a couple of core ideas here that are introduced in the first chapter. Um, Real-time reporting is absolutely key. In fact, real-time reporting plus just-in-time processes and teams working together is considered kind of the definition of FinOps. Teams need to collaborate. This is, again, the, the core message, the key message of the first chapter of the book. Decisions should be driven by the business value. And I think this is really new for a lot of people in IT, the idea of trying to figure out what is the business value of the technology they, they uh, deploy. And it really wasn't possible before because, of course, you didn't have the ability to understand what the unit economic impact was, or rather, how you could have an impact on unit economics. Total revenue shipments, customer orders, paid subscribers, you're building the technology to accomplish something. And now, with data coming from the billing and consumption API, tied to tagging, you have the ability to understand whether or not you're accomplishing those goals. You can create a perfect feedback loop of real-time data using some of the tools such as Cloud and Cloud Zero or Cloudability. You can understand what, how your cloud activity is tied to your business goals. This is actually quite new, and I think one of the reasons why so many organizations are having a hard time adopting FinOps and why this has to be discussed, I, I think, repeatedly and, and clearly until everyone understands what the value really is. Real-time data and cloud activity kind of the magic uh, loop there. The ideas are actually quite simple and yet difficult, I think, to put into practice. So as we go through the book, we will learn more. And to learn more, I suggest you pick up a copy of Cloud FinOps. And if you want to talk about Azure, or rather learn about Azure Cost Management, please pick up a copy of my book. I thank you very much for watching this video. 
which I hope you got something from. Stay tuned for episode two, Why FinOps, coming soon. <laughs>